sire has arrived with a goal in mind. Martin Allen. Oh, a great strike! Early this season, Queen's Park Rangers were top of the first division with several impressive wins behind them. A record you could hardly expect to improve on. The traditional view of such success is that the man behind it is the manager. After all, it's the manager who does the thinking and the talking. The players are expected simply to keep fit and to deliver what he asks of them. One thing, boys, right? Who's coming into the box out at M3? He's your man. Right? What would get really shame? You, you look around and pick up who's spare. Right? And then, you know, and then you, if they're going on to the near, you'll go into the near, as we say. But as manager Jim Smith admits, that doesn't necessarily guarantee results on the pitch. It's easy for us as managers and coaches to communicate, but when you get it all one way, and that's all coming out from us, I sometimes tend to think uh, players close their ears and say, here he goes again. So if he can't get through to them, how can he motivate his players to do better? One highly controversial answer is to use a sports psychologist. As an experiment, QED has offered him just that. John Sire, who worked at Tottenham in the early 80s, has been recruited for a period of six weeks. And this film is about what happened during that time. John Sire's first task is to make the players actively want what he has to offer. Mental training is really using your minds to improve your performance. Our minds always affect our performance anyway. That's why some days you play brilliant, and some days, even though you're equally fit, there's something going on inside that means that you play less well. And mental training is really a set of exercises which you can do to ensure that you do use your mind positively to improve your performance. When we think, we think in two different ways. We think in pictures and we think in words. Before a match, if Jim comes up to you and gives you an instruction, it'll be in words. Now the other way that your mind thinks is in pictures. If you're driving to the game and you, you stop at the traffic lights and you're thinking about the game, you're probably thinking in pictures. You think about how you're going to play. You're probably thinking in pictures rather than words. Now because our mind works that way, it's easy for me to describe the mental training exercises, to group them as those which are mainly concerned with words and those that are mainly concerned with pictures. OK, I think we'll go on to the... The first exercise is to fill in a questionnaire, not something footballers are used to doing, but its aim is to help them discover for themselves the strengths and weaknesses of their game. OK, so this is technical skills, and I want you to rate how good you are out of ten at each of the skills. When you've done that, we look at the same skills again. And I'd like you to consider which of them are the most important this time. Right now, I'd like you to take the first figure away from the figure in the second column and put the answer in the third. Since the first column shows how good they are at a particular skill and the second how good they need to be, the results in the third column will highlight their areas of weakness, with the biggest figure indicating the one which most needs working on. Now, you've come up with one skill which you feel you might usefully work on and improve. I'd like you to put your papers under the chair and then sit back and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Okay? So, close your eyes and with your eyes closed, first of all, just notice what you're feeling. If you take a deeper breath, as you breathe easily, 
Imagine that the tension is draining away from your shoulders through your arms and away through your hands and fingers. Imagine any tension. This next exercise is designed to help the players to improve the skill they've identified by thinking in pictures. I'd like you to go back in your mind to the match where you were playing that particular skill well. I'd like you to think of one moment in that game when you performed the skill well. Notice what the weather is like on that particular day, what sounds you can hear in the crowd, what the ground feels like beneath your feet, who's beside you, who's supporting you, who the opponents are, and then allow yourself to play through that particular skill. So that there's some build up that you play the skill and there's a result. And then keeping your eye closed, go back again to the beginning and play it through again. Okay, when you've finished, when you've done that the third time, you can open your eyes. And the first thing I say really, <laughs> it's fine that you're laughing. The most normal reaction to doing something strange is to laugh. But if you were to spend five minutes each night at home rehearsing this skill, not in a group like this, you find, will find that this skill will improve. How many people could, in fact, recall the particular skill, yourself doing the skill well? Could you just yeah. say, yeah, you could. What's your reactions to all of it? As long as it doesn't take over, I mean, you can start thinking about it too much and forget about all the rest of it. I mean, you can come off a pitch and go through your brain every day and every night, and you can keep thinking about all these different things that you're not doing right. And you could be all night and all day thinking about it, but sometimes it's best just to forget it all and just get on with it, you know? Thinking about pictures in the mind, I do, I do that a lot. I find I, when I go to bed of an evening, that I think a lot about it. <laughs> I find it hard to sleep after a game, and the, the game goes through my mind, what I've done well and what I haven't done so good. Dean Coney, Dixie, has accepted John's offer of one-to-one -one sessions, focusing on individual weaknesses. His weakness is that when he's passing an opponent, he invariably dodges to the left and finds it difficult to go the other way. So now John is asking him to visualize dodging to the right. This time, Dean, I'd like you to go back to the beginning and then take a deep breath and hold it for a moment. And keeping your eyes closed, tell me what you're doing as if you're doing it now and how it feels. Well, I'm just uh, running towards the defender. I just dropped my left shoulder and moved the ball to the right with the outside of my right foot. And okay. momentum takes me past him on the Great. outside. Good. Okay. Maybe you open your eyes and finish. That was all right. You could do it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel myself going. Doing it. You know. Yeah. yeah. So you know exactly. It's what not it's natural like. to me. No. To do that, I naturally go the yeah. other way. So. Really, in order to develop that, you know what it is. You just need to practice it more. I mean, you can practice it more out there, yeah, of course, right, yeah. which is important, too. Yeah. If, you're, if you're taking the decision now, or you took it the other day, that this is for a, it's worth spending a week to develop this particular thing, this particular ability, then um, it's good for you to actually practice it as often as you can, but also in your mind to practice it. Martin Allen, despite the doubts he expressed at the meeting, has also volunteered. Initially, his aim is to improve his speed. His ideal is his teammate Paul. Paul Parker's speed is just exceptional. I mean, yeah. he could make a mistake, or somebody else makes a mistake, and you think the centre forward's got this, and all of a sudden Paul's sort of taken off, and he's there. Mm. You know, he's got that, and he's straight in for it. He's like a couple of steps and he's so quick and he's there. And uh, it's great, you know, I'd live so I had that sort of speed. Right. <laughs> I wish I had, uh, I, wish you, the, I wish I had the bit of film of what you just did. Like this, like this. Yeah, because that is that, it, that's you know, that. I mean, that's a bit of film of that would be a good, would, as you said it, you were feeling what it's like to do it. Mm. Okay, that's what I want to, remind you of.
because inside there is that feeling and the more you reinforce that feeling the more you're going to find it on the pitch when you need it mm. given that you keep working at the physical exercises as well yeah okay so we'll do the visualization now for martin's visualization john is using a different technique Martin tends to dwell on moments when things didn't work out. So John's taking one such moment and helping him to transform it into a success. Running onto the ball. OK, you can feel yourself running on the ball. Take the ball forward. Yeah. Run towards the goal. Great. And then? Um, Where's Tony Adams? Just, you know, Tony Adams has come in from the side and behind me. Yeah. On my right. And I flick the ball across the front of him to, and to try to go on the other side. Yeah. And just as he slid, pushed the ball forward, and I'd have been clear. Right. OK. And how does it feel to do that? Keep him with me. Uh... Uh, it just felt, it would have felt good. Yeah. Good. All right. Two weeks into the experiment, QPR faced their toughest game yet, an away match against Liverpool. To study the effect of John's exercises, QED has appointed an assessor, Sally Newman, who is sports editor of QPR's local newspaper. Here's Dean Coney, Allen. Martin Allen's aim is to improve his speed. According to Sally Newman, in this game he has certainly been fast enough to win most of his tackles. What's more, quite often when he had the ball, he'd win a tackle and another player would be straight onto him and he'd still fight through. Dean Coney's aim is to dodge to the right, but today he's had little opportunity to even try it. Dean Coney had a difficult job. He was up against Alan Hansen, mostly in the air, and he didn't win many balls. He had very little ground possession at all. In fact, the whole team found themselves under more and more pressure as the game went on. The final result was a 4-0 win for Liverpool. He's got Beardsley going to his left, but still Barnes. That's a fabulous individual goal. The team's defeat inevitably means they'll be depressed. That may well be something John Sire will want to work on later. For the moment, it's up to manager Jim Smith to console them. We had four good chances there in the second half by passing the ball, didn't we? Hey, four good chances. We were a bit unlucky, and I thought you should just go down on with us. Go, get your head down. As I said, most of your job was right. Just lost your way a little bit. <coughs> well, we're still top of the table, ain't we? Be cool with Liverpool, <laughs> isn't it? The following week, it's business as usual at the training ground. For John, the immediate task is to get the players to check their individual aims with Jim Smith and Peter Shreve, the team coach. I think what I would say to you, Martin, is, yeah, OK, everyone would like to be as fast as Paul Park or, you know, mm -hmm. catch pigeons. I'm saying to you that is not your number one requirement. Mm -hmm. in your development at the minute. What you showed on the training ground this morning is what you should be concerned with. When you've got possession of the ball, taking your time, making the pass that means the most to the team. Yeah. Martin summed up the idea of taking his time as composure on the ball. In his new visualization, it's that composure which allows him to score. In Dean's case, Jim has suggested he should change his aim to being more aggressive, particularly as his original aim of dodging opponents to the right has already been effective. 
Played in the under-21 game, England under-21s. And it actually, I actually did do the... I went past on the outside oh, right. and got a crossing. And automatically, I just thought of you. Right. And then just got on with the game, you know? It just I flashed through my mind. Oh, that's great. But, I mean, what I'd like to say is... I mean, I, know, I, I did put that down. Yes. I'd like to improve it. But, I mean, obviously, there's quite a few things. Well, that's right. What you've been going over. I mean, I, 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 I agree with what the boss has said. Yeah. About being more nasty. More nasty. Being nasty, I don't think he means to go around elbowing people. No. Things exactly. like that. He just means getting in front. Getting and, in front. And, you know, getting over the top of people like for headers, which is what more specific what he said. You know, I went on a challenge him. Perhaps, you know, perhaps I could work on that. Dean sums up his new aim as being attack-minded when facing goal. His new visualisation is to score with a header. In the reality of the Football League, goals are harder to come by. They depend not only on individuals, but on the team as a whole. And just recently, team morale has taken a battering. After a league win against Portsmouth, QPR's defeat in the Littlewoods Cup by 3rd Division Berry came as a nasty shock. But here too, John Sire's methods can help. He's suggested a team meeting where his aim will be to get the players to think and talk about their problems and to suggest their own solutions. John has asked Jim Smith to provide the subject. The one Jim has chosen is belief in the team's ability to win. In terms of what it means for you right now, what level is your level of belief? If you were to score it out of ten, what would it be? Eight. Seven. 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 Eight. Seven. Six. Seven. Ten. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You threw me there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so th th that's, a, that's a baseline point. And I think, I mean, I appreciate the tens, but speaking for myself about anything I do, I, you know, sometimes I feel ten and sometimes I don't, and uh, it comes and goes a bit. So I want to sort of explore a little bit more the times when you feel ten out of ten and the times when maybe you feel only five out of ten. OK, so I'd like you to write down an occasion or a situation in a match which gives you a feeling of, uh-uh, I'm not so sure. My belief isn't so high. When you've all finished, I want you to, uh, how many are we, 13, 4? Could you count off to 7, what, like 1? Say, so call out the numbers, John, if you call out the number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, And then, eight. no, you go one again. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. OK, so would you find the person who's the same number of you as you, take your chair, break up the circle. You've got five minutes with your partner just discussing what you've written down and listening to what he's got written down. <laughs> What makes things go wrong with it, yeah. Now he's got them talking, John wants each pair to decide which situations undermine their belief so that he can draw up a full list for the whole team. Let me see, so just run out my ideas. Yeah. If you look at these for the moment, see which of these are very specific that you feel you might be able to do something about. Which do you think are most important? Can you choose three? Put a mark like this against the three that you find most important. No ideas when a goal's down was scored the highest. Players arguing, which is also some, something like this one, these two are really linked. And players arguing was the second one. Now that the players have identified their two most urgent problems, John splits the team into groups of four to decide on possible solutions. 
it's going to come from the top. Yeah. That way. Yeah. Yeah. But we've, not, we've got to know when to change that particular system. I don't think there's been too much arguing throughout the team all season. Silly hugging, anyway. What? It's been constructed, it? Yeah. And when it has? It's been constructed. Can you spell that? It's been good. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's hear what, what, what you've got. The first thing. Uh, for the first question, we've got um, that I think the system we're playing I think that we've got to have, when we do go a goal down and we're chasing a goal, I think we've got to have um, something worked out before, maybe in training, that we can change it. Well, we decided that we don't think the arguing's been a problem this season anyway, you know. Okay. No, it was yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, it has. No, it hasn't. <laughs> 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 we felt that conceding a goal against Pompey, uh, we seem to have a mental block about creating chances. So, did you come up with an idea as to how to...? Well, I think us as defenders, we, you know, we feel as though we've got to be patient. Yeah, OK. And, and keep passing rather than throwing caution to the wind. Out of this, we've got... I mean, one thing that was, was very specific was, well, maybe we should plan a bit more in training for being a goal down. I don't know what you'd think about that. But it's a bit negative. <laughs> negative. Isn't it? But I mean, to have a plan. They're right. I think I think that I think that is a fair point. I think you've got to. Uh, no, I think it. it was our intention to do that today because uh, you know we had that against Bury, but then we had three players, uh, you know, who was unfit and unwell. We wasn't able to do what we'd intended, budge. But I mean, it's right. If you want something in training put on for you, then it's your job to come and see me and the boss and say, look, this is what I feel. This is what we feel. It's a team game. We're part of the team as well. By providing the players with the opportunity to talk more openly in an organised setting, John's beginning to open up the two-way communication that Jim wants. Strangely enough, improved communication is what Martin Allen sees as one of the biggest benefits of his individual work. Before, um, I didn't have anybody to sort of tell me what I'd done wrong or how I could improve. I was just sort of part of the team and the team meeting. The team have got to do this, the team have got to do that. But then it came to these individual meetings and instead of the team, it was Martin, you were not making enough tackles or you were not composed enough around the box or in the midfield. And so it's made me think more about that on a personal thing. To reinforce his individual aims, Martin has put up pictures and slogans as constant reminders of what they are. But doing the visualisation has been more of a challenge. I do find the visualisation hard to do, the way you just sort of sit down and you let it drain all through your body, and you think about this goal, and then if you scored it. Because I think I do visualise things anyway, in my own sort of way. So now to sit down and do it all through the week is a bit different for me. The purpose of Martin's visualisation is to help him develop his composure on the ball. The following Saturday against Norwich, when he needed that composure, he found it. Martin Allen. Martin's goal meant that QPR drew against Norwich, as they did in their next match against Watford. It's now John Sire's final week with the team. His aim today is to prepare the players for their forthcoming game against Tottenham. Looking ahead to Saturday's game, the two questions that I'd like to take today, and if you could get your pens and paper and answer them, are these. The first one is, what was the main message for you at training today? Second question is, what issues still need clarifying before Saturday. Under John's guidance, the players have become much more willing to think and talk about their problems. The basic team pattern needs to be practiced after the change of players participating. I just felt that um, after having a lot of success earlier on in the season, I think we're getting away from what is expected of indi individuals within the team. Uh, for instance, I thought within the last two or three weeks, 
full box have pushed on far too quick when we've won possession. And that's not allowing me to come out and join up with the midfield. Um, it has changed, especially for me as a midfield player. Now, being part of three out-and-out -out midfield players with Justin coming in on the right, Kevin in the middle, and now me playing on the left. Um, before, I, I knew exactly with Kevin when you had the ball, virtually all the time, me and Kevin would make our crossover runs. Before John came to QPR, a discussion like this would have been unheard of. Now, Martin, like the other players, is much more willing to express his concerns over the details of tactical play. As a result, all of them have come to understand one another much better. I think what's happened again this morning, people, all of you, are communicating better and, and offering, offering your observations, which I think is important. And I think you've also got to carry that onto the pitch. While you're talking to one another in here, you've got to talk a little bit more on the pitch, as I felt that wasn't there again this morning. You know, good instruction I'm talking about, not uh, rollicking. I mean, I think we should talk a little bit more and, and be more helpful with our tongue uh, with to on the pitch. The team is on its way to Tottenham. A win today could put them back to the top of the league. For John, it marks the end of his six-week period. And for the players, another chance to put what they've learnt into practice. I've been thinking about being attack-minded, whereas in other games, you didn't even think nothing about it. you just done what you had to do. But now when the uh, ball's up the other end of the field, or even, even when it's uh, up this end of the field, you're thinking about being attack-minded. Over the six weeks, our assessor, Sally Newman, feels that Martin and Dean have achieved their aims. Dean seems to be thinking ahead in terms of attack, even when he's in his own half. He's playing so that he can create chances for other players, and if chances fall to him, he knows what to do with them. There was one chance he certainly knew what to do with, a header, just as he had visualised. In Martin's case, she thinks his newfound composure has made him a more effective player. Martin seems to have gained in confidence. The aggression which is always shown seems to have been channeled into attacking play much more over recent weeks. QPR held Tottenham to a draw, despite playing most of the match with only ten men. Great result there, no. Yeah, great result there, of course. Although the experiment has lasted only six weeks, Jim Smith believes that John has benefited the whole team. He has made a definite impact in ways that I didn't first think was going to happen, and that is people being more mentally aware of their own teammates' duties, their own duties, and uh, how they can help themselves to be more positive and more confident on the pitch. And I think if they're all doing that, it communicates their team spirits and there's a, a better feeling amongst everybody and that is also very important. <laughs>